Let's talk a little about Christopher Hitchens. This is the second part in a series that I made. I'll post a link to part one called Christopher Hitchens Was a Scam Artist, where we sort of refute some of his arguments about Mother Teresa. We explain that The Trial of Henry Kissinger, written by Hitchens, is actually the paraphrasing of another book, The Price of Power, Kissinger in the Nixon White House, written by Seymour Hersh. And we mentioned that um, a lot of the arguments put forth in God is Not Great are also just, you know, age-old talking points that have been uttered by other individuals over the course of, of a series of decades. But one of the things that we didn't get to talk about was the Iraq War. And, you know, like even the supporters of Hitchens, I've noticed, seem very critical of him for supporting the Iraq War, the invasion of Iraq and just George W. Bush in general, because Christopher Hitchens went a little be above and beyond when it came to the Iraq War. He was actually hired by the Bush administration as an ad hoc consultant, and he was also a complete endorser of neoconservatism. He endorsed the movement completely, and for a period of time he identified as a neocon, which is sort of a ridiculous thing to do. I mean, there's a reason why so many people dislike John Bolton, because if you could actually just sort of break down the sort of neoconservatism that led to the Iraq war, it's pretty much like, hey, we want to be the ones with all the power, so if someone else tries to do something that we don't want them to do, we're going to beat them up. I mean, that's like what these people are doing, and they sort of um, package it in a sort of different way when, you know, it's like they say that um, we need to go to war to preserve democracy. And then, you know, I mean, how many hundreds of thousands of people are going to die before you just recognize that the Iraq war was a mistake? But as far as I understand, up until his death, Christopher Hitchens never um, repudiated that decision. Furthermore, he endor endorsed 21st century imperialism. Like, I mean, as far as I understand, he did endorse imperialism. And, you know, that's just a bad thing. That's just, you know, once again, I understand that you might not like certain governments in the world. But once again, how many hundreds of thousands of people do you have to die? Have do you have to kill? How many hundreds of thousands of people have to die before you recognize that imperialism is catastrophic? And there are other ways to go about things, you know, such as trying to solve problems with diplomacy, for example. Now, you know, it's like Christopher Hitchens is somebody who is also a very, very prominent figure in many of um, his in his fan base, really, like the YouTube community forums. Uh, very popular with young people, um, teenagers, 20-somethings. But I don't necessarily know that he's very well respected among the scholars. And he's not very, very well respected kind of, you know, in sort of an academic understanding. And, you know, with his sort of kind of brash, loudmouth tone of voice, I don't necessarily know that he would ever really truly be accepted in academia. Maybe in some sort of literature class you could incorporate some of his novels, but when you actually want to deal with his sort of political commentary, he just uses the same tricks that a lot of talk radio guys do, that a lot of political commentators do, that a lot of social commentators do. That's just what it is. It's just commentary. It's just he happened to have a particular kind of charismatic personality, and he knew how to manipulate the dark hatred of humanity. He knew how to manipulate the kind of very upsetting factors that um, drive humans to destructive actions, and he knew how to manipulate that and get people to follow him. And he talked very openly about it. He talked very openly about how human beings do have these um, destructive impulses and um, you know, he just wanted to kind of be at the center point of it. The problem is, is just that everything he put forward wasn't an antidote for that stuff. The problem is everything that he put forward didn't solve any of the problems. The problem is that those things only increased his own popularity. The mission of Christopher Hitchens was not to bring peace to the world. The mission of Christopher Hitchens was not to improve anything other than his own stardom. He just wanted to be famous. He just wanted to be at the center of everything. That's why everything, you know, just revolved around his personality. That's why everything revolved around insulting someone. I mean, like, and that's why everything revolved around character assassination pieces, which we discussed in detail during the first segment. So I would, once again, I'll post a link to that so everyone can really check some things out. But, you know, even on his deathbed, was it possible that Christopher Hitchens, you know, could have just really repudiated and kind of, you know, even apologized for endorsing the Iraq War and George W. Bush? Furthermore, I mean, no matter what type of cause you would like to try and the way you would like to try and justify the Iraq War, 
George W. Bush was talking about this in 1999, you know, when he wrote this in his book about how, um, you know, they would like to go to war with Iraq to get re-election. And he said very clearly that if his father had gone to war with Iraq, he would have he would have defeated Bill Clinton in the general election and he would have, you know, been re-elected president. So it's like, you know, this was just a political move, which Richard Clark talked very openly about. Therefore, it's like, I mean, I don't really know why Christopher Hitchens would try and justify this so much. I mean, yes, I understand they're bad regimes. Yes, I understand it's not easy to like Saddam Hussein. I don't like Saddam Hussein. But, you know, the way that it was going about, the way that they went about with the Iraq war, which was started on a lie, which was started on, you know, via serious legal violations and you know it's just like i mean there were articles put forth in the house of representatives articles of impeachment against george w bush however it didn't go to um it didn't actually come to fruition but you know they did want to impeach him over that because you know it was a very destructive action that was gone about in a very immoral and unethical manner and you know it's just like all i can really say is I don't think Christopher Hitchens even revealed his entire kind of, you know, worldview into his uh, writings and his public persona. I mean, you know, there's a – during his interview slash debate with Tom Hartman, they were discussing the book God is Not Great. And there, he had one line in there where I, where I almost began to think that maybe Christopher Hitchens wasn't exactly the atheist that he tried to portray himself as because that's what a lot of people were saying. There's like, there's no way he's fake. I mean, who would have – how could Christopher Hitchens possibly be a Christian? Well, just listen to this for a second when it's like, I don't think he was a Christian, but, um, you know, people like Sam Harris have uh, come out and endorsed uh, certain spiritual practices. Michael Shermer, another um, very loud atheist, is um, someone who says, I am free from God, but not the God of nature. And I think that Christopher Hitchens was somewhat similar to those guys. Because, you know, it's like um, they were discussing the book God is Not Great during his debate with Tom Hartman. And there was just one line at the very end and he's just like, he's like, no, you don't know what I believe. I haven't said anything about what I believe in. And, you know, it's just like, well, they've had this whole conversation just about the book God is Not Great, how religion poisons everything. And then he threw in that line where that kind of just um, stood out to me as, Perhaps he sort of saw something in religion that he was not sharing to the general public because he thought it was easier to manipulate his followers with this brash message of atheism and anti-theism. But in reality, he was actually somewhat a little more open to certain things of it. I mean, that's just a personal feeling. Like, I can't prove that. The same way that Hitchens would say something about Thomas Jefferson, the way he believed Thomas Jefferson was an atheist, but he can't prove that. I would say the same thing about Hitchens. Um, I just kind of recognize some openness to spirituality in him that he just didn't want to share because he thought it was easier to manipulate people with this sort of um, – well, with books like God is Not Great. I think he was a very manipulative person. And he was kind of a very calculating person. In one of his final interviews with Brian Lamb on C-SPAN, excuse me, Brian Lamb just asked him that direct well, question slash statement, I want to know how much you're calculating. And I mean that's like – that's kind of Christopher Hitchens in a nutshell. It's like how much of this is just you know you trying to spin circles so you can build your own popularity by manipulating this – very destructive quality of humanity about very impressionable people and moving it to your advantage. Remember the three signs of a cult leader, you know, the three signs of them, right? First, they discredit all the ways of the past. Secondarily, they produce a new way for, for people to live. And the third thing they do is they say that you are missing something in your life and the only way to get it is to follow the new way that they have produced. Well, that's kind of what Hitchens did with God is Not Great or perhaps even with some of his political commentary because what he did was he said, um, you know, it's just like everything that you think about the past is no more and, you know, I have this book that has more answers than you think. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing that he did was say that if you don't follow the teachings in my book, God is Not Great, you are stupid. If you are a theist, you are stupid. I mean, how many times did he say that? I mean, literally, I mean, he said that so many times, you know, and I was just like, 
That's just what it is. It's just a cult leader mentality. It's just, you know, trying to build up his own following by discrediting all the ways of the past. And he produced a new book that he expected everybody to follow. And he said that if you do not follow this book, you're not as intelligent as I am. You're not part of the intelligent part of humanity. You're part of the stupid part of humanity. That's exactly what he said, and that's exactly what he did. It was just sort of, you know, a giant manipulation game. And, you know, he really played a lot of his followers kind of like pawns, you know. And he became very famous. He became very reputable. And he's somebody, you know, who he was very good at what he did. And um, he was just very calculating when he did that. I mean, that was his that was his objective, to be famous and to be kind of... Um, kind of get notoriety for the things that he was saying, but also to have himself as kind of the center of everything, the center of attention, the center of all conversations and discussions, even trying to say that, you know, <laughs> the ways of God or something are not good enough. No, you need the ways of Christopher Hitchens, therefore buy my book, and if you don't buy my book, you're stupid, which is essentially his message and in a nutshell. The problem is, you know, with that is just, you know, it's very divisive and well, furthermore, um, we'll be we talking about all the things in the first up in the first um, upload about challenging some of his arguments about how it's very kind of you know flimsy paper thin stuff that he just um, kind of spins into a very um, long drawn out sequence of you know somewhat sometimes rather articulate sentences, but it's just paraphrasing older ideas from the past, and you can listen to more of that in part one, which I'll post a link to, but. I'm just not impressed with the guy. I never saw the big deal. I never saw what the appeal was, other than the fact that he says, you know, that cult leader mentality that we've got on over. I mean, if that's what you go for, but I mean, once you sort of recognize that that's just a manipulation tactic to sell books and to get people to talk about you in a favorable light, that's all it is. And it's not really anything to get excited about.